This is the second video demonstrating how to take a three-dimensional part file on Autodesk Inventor and create a two-dimensional drawing from it. Now, the idea is that if we were to print out our two-dimensional drawing on, you know, this is actually a sheet of paper because we're A-size, and give it to someone that knew how to machine things, that they would be able to create the 3D object from the 2D drawings. So if you keep that in mind when you're dimensioning that this is going to an end user that's going to create this, then hopefully that will help you capture all the necessary information for that uh, person. Now, we already have our base view, projected view, section view, and our isometric view. What we need to do is create all our dimensions to express the, the, the size and features. If you go to the Annotate tab, this is where we're going to do most of our work today. Uh, one thing that's good to do is you'll notice here on the base view that, I, that there are center marks where all the arcs uh, are. And the center mark really tells the user that, hey, this is not a straight line. This is an arc. This is the center point. And especially when we're dimensioning from those center points, it is even more important to have those center marks. Now, um, depending on what the center mark looks like for the program, which this program, they're pretty big. So if we put center marks everywhere, it's, it's going to clutter this up really fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put center marks at, at those arcs that I am actually dimensioning to. And my hope is that one, it will be uncluttered, but two, that since this is kind of a symmetrical object that someone could infer that there were arcs more than just the ones that were labeled, which I think is pretty safe. But uh, let's go ahead and move on here. So the center mark is kind of here right in the middle of the toolbar. And I'm definitely going to do the center circle. I'm going to do this small arc on that side. And I'm going to do this large arc on the right side. Now they kind of have these tails that you can grab and move around. And since they're pretty big, I'm going to minimize it as much as possible. Then I'm going to take my dimension tool and I'm going to start with those two that I just created. So from the center of this base view to the center of that mark uh, is my dimension. Now, all the dimensions right now are set to two decimal places for precision. I'm going to be using three and there's some places I'm going to be using one decimal place or no decimal places. So um, get very comfortable with this. And if you are doing just a ton of the same um, pre uh, precision dimensions, then it may be useful to change the document settings themselves. But we only have a dozen to do, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. If I click OK, then you see that it it puts my label here, puts my dimension. Now, one thing to keep in mind is... In drawing, it doesn't always put it where you want the first time, or if you have to move stuff around because it's starting to get cluttered, then that's something that you should do. And you can do that in several ways. You can grab uh, the number itself. You can see I can move it around and uh, uh, the lead arrows kind of follow. Um, I can take these little green buttons and do some different things. But generally speaking, you want to leave these as right angle as possible. And you just want to put your your lead arrows in a place that um, just clearly shows what the dimension is without having um, too much together in one place, without having it cluttered. Because when things are cluttered, they're hard to read. Okay, let's do the next one here. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that uh, it's okay. There it is. Sometimes it won't give you this aligned dimension. And in that case, you can right click and tell it what you want. And that looks good right there. That's a three decimal place dimension. Okay. Now I have a flat to flat call out here and I have to kind of decide where's the best place for this. I'm going to leave that in two decimal places. Next dimension is the hole in the middle, the through hole. That is three decimal places. 
And let's see, then I have this hidden line. And if you look at the drawing, that has no decimal places. This arc up here has three decimal places. And it also has this x6. What that's telling you is this dimension is times six because there's six points on this part. And the same thing with this other radius. There are six of these large uh, radius callouts. So that x6 is trying to tell you that there's only one dimension, but it happens six times on this part. And the way we do that is when we get to this menu, we could go to the tab that says text, and we just add it in. It's important to not delete that. You want to add it in after that. And it's just simply an x6. Now I need to put a center mark here. Although I'm going to collapse those leads. And then put it somewhere over here. So I need to do two things. I need to put an x6 and then go to the precision and change that to three digits. And that looks pretty good. All right, I believe that's all the dimensions here. The next thing would be to go up here. Now, if we think about a two-dimensional object, or excuse me, a, a three-dimensional object represented in two dimensions, well, this side view is extremely important. So all, almost the minimum you should ever have is two views, the absolute minimum, because we are representing three dimensions, right? Now, when things start to get close together like this, it's important to leave as much space as you can between so that things are not cluttered. I could also take this 25 and kind of put it up here so there's some space between. It's just one of the things we need to practice doing is giving some space between. Looks like my last dimension is going to be this guy in here. And that is three digits. And you can see with the size of that object, it's getting a little tough to tell. So, you know, one option would be to drag it over here and drop it outside where you don't have lines on top of your numbers. Um, that's not bad, except my point can almost be obscured. So that might be another option that works. That's probably what I would do, just so the number is very clean. Uh, but if you wanted, you could grab this right here and just drag it outside. You have the lead lines to tell you exactly what you're referencing. But this is where it's almost, you know, some individual decisions there as far as what happens next. Now, as far as uh, putting things in the title block, um, you can enter things in the properties. And some of these areas will populate in here. Like if I were to change the title or if I added the title in here of one quarter captive nut knob. And I put my uh, information in there. If I click OK, it actually enters that in the title here. Now, it's a little bit more advanced, but we can have that auto-populate based on other things. And sometimes there's a default to do that, uh, but I don't want to talk about that in this video. The last thing I want to talk about is just adding some text. So if I just had uh, some text I wanted to add in here, like the student CNC projects, I can simply type it in. Maybe I want that to be a little larger. And there it is. I can move it around, get it where I want. But that is a very straightforward way of putting things in your title block. Um, now, the title block is actually very useful in the industry because as things go through processes of being checked and revised, those can be added into here so that you can see a drawing, a document, and know exactly where it is in its production. But for our purposes, as long as you understand that, that's all we really need to know. Uh, we're more concerned with putting the part information in here, enough information to go ahead and recreate this. 
All right, so that's the second video on creating the part. And at this point, we have taken a part, a three-dimensional part. We have expressed all of its dimensions in, in the two-dimensional drawing. Hope you liked it.